Shana Barago, and um, I'm the artistic director of the San Francisco Transgender Film Festival. And so I, I wear the hat of um, curator and arts administrator a lot, but I'm also a musician and a songwriter. Um, so that's very my life vocation, really. So I try to do both things and give both things equal weight and justice. Um, the San Francisco Transgender Film Festival is the world's first transgender film festival and the longest running. We started here in the city in 1997. Um, we didn't get any funding, really, um, until maybe the last, I don't know, less than 10 years, I would say. We, no one would fund us. Um, I think we started really as a DIY festival. Um, it was originally founded by my friends, <coughs> Christopher Lee and Alex Austin, two trans men, um, also trans men of color, and I was involved. They brought me on board as co-artistic director in 2003, and so we tried to uh, stay true to this sort of, I would say almost a punk ethos, um, where many of us came from actually, and also um, truth to power in what we curate and screen. So, you know, we get, we have our call for submissions out right now. We have a whole team of people um, that, you know, folks of color, trans people, queer people, we had advisory board, screen committees. Um, we get, you know, we get all kinds of requests because there's been this kind of explosion in this sort of kind of um, mainstream trans moment that, you know, is like every other mainstream moment when it's considered a breakthrough. It's not really a breakthrough, as we know, because who's making the who's making the product, who's making the art. So Transparent, probably a lot of you have heard of this movie, this show. Um, of course, foundationally, I'm gonna keep bringing this idea up, I'm sure you already know it. What, what's foundationally true to any organization, including the United States, what's foundationally true, right? Um, white patriarchal power structures, um, white supremacist, racist, genocide, etc. And so we, here we have this trans moment that's a breakthrough. My partner said, be nice, I'm gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, this is, this is part of the work. This goes into our thinking. So here's a show that had the opportunity to actually cast a trans person, a gender variant person in the lead role, right? They didn't do it because they thought they wanna get funding. And if you're afraid of not getting funding, you still do it. That's, that's what we do. That's what our art has to do, right? Those kind of compromises can't be part of our movements if we want to radically shift this country. And so that show foundationally was never going to be solved for that, that compromise, okay? And that's what we as queers, unfortunately, that's our own track record. Too often, that's what we have done in the pursuit of what we think are the important struggles. We keep foundationally making that compromise at a key moment. And so there's a reason we're also here now in this, this era that we live in, because we've been part of it. We've been part of too many compromises. We haven't joined forces with other communities that have been struggling. So these are the conversations. This is what goes into what films we screen. So we get producers from Hollywood that they don't realize like you're actually <coughs> already in a one down position when you talk to us because mm -hmm. we don't respect you immediately. So that's who's in the house right now. Thank you. <laughs> so a really good segue into the, the next topic that um, um, I wanted us to talk a little bit about um, and that is the challenge of um, you know holding queer space in, uh, in our communities now and what does it mean to create that queer space and maintain that and sustain that and um, there are, 
you know, there are so many forces that seem to distract us from that uh, purpose or to uh, uh, intend to thwart us uh, from our efforts. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious um, um, from, to hear from all of you on, you know, the challenges that you are facing in order to um, remain in, in, San, in the San Francisco Bay Area community making, making queer art. What are some of the forces that you're reckoning with? Um, <clears throat> Well, I think in a very pragmatic <coughs> level, I mean, um, it costs money to put on a film festival. And of course, the theater we use is a nonprofit also, the Roxy. And um, they could probably be on this stage, you know, just as much as me. and. Um, so, you know, they're trying to survive and they have to raise their fees and that means we have to raise more money and that doesn't always happen. Um, it's also this idea, I think a lot of well-intentioned funders, you know, they want to keep seeing this like growth model. And it's interesting how this, this horrible idea that unfortunately, right, if in say 1776, they really had said, let's get rid of slavery and let's, God, let's not go any farther west. Let's, let's, this is good. <laughs> right here. And we're going to have a sustainable way of, of doing um, an economy, right? Like, this is just coerced social norms that we all operate under. It doesn't have to be this way. And so, um, it's an interesting how we all internalize it, even well-intentioned people who are funders. I'm glad Roger's not here <laughs> right now. But, you know, so they want to keep seeing growth. And I would say that with kind of this crisis of various nonprofits, um, it's interesting if you were to look at nonprofits in the city <coughs> in the last 10 or 15 years, and you were to look at like the for-profit sector, you would see this this horrible. It was already bad, but now it's it's like we're like the dinosaurs. You know, mm -hmm. we might we not might not be around much longer, at least here. You know, we're gonna we're gonna win. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna do it. But so I mean, just in a trying to um, pay all the expenses, and also we would love to bring more filmmakers out. We get filmmakers from all over the the world and the country, and we try to bring one or two out each year but it's very hard. Um, all of our audience, I would say, over 90% of our audience comes from out of San Francisco. Um, and when we first started, Christopher, in the different projects we did, we could walk, we could get a bunch of flyers from Kinko's, because we didn't have computers. And we would walk from like, 16th in Valencia to 24th Street in Valencia. And we're like, great, let's go have a beer. We've done our outreach. <laughs> and that's all we needed to do. And I'm sure some of you understand that yeah. exactly. <laughs> you know, and, and that's really all we needed to do in word of mouth. And so most everybody lived in the city, you know. So, but I also think one of the interesting things that's also happened is because um, this idea of what it means to be gender variant or gender intentional or trans, there's, you know, and who is coming out, and you kind of see replicated all the same sort of oppressions and privileges, right? So um, I've also had some great mentors, and I've also been forced to, to kind of learn a lot of things in a hard way. And I think there's a thing about whiteness that you know, first of all, us white people, we don't like the term white people, but I would say that there's a lot of white people who are trans that come from affluent backgrounds or have more class privilege also than some other communities do. And so part of the thing has been, how do we actually show what are the most compelling stories? Mm -hmm. Is it really another coming out story? Mm -hmm. You know, and who has money to have film equipment, who has money to go to film school. So when we started, it was very, there were so few people making you know, films. And um, 
that really was true for a really long time. And so now, so many of our submissions, I would say, you really see this sort of white supremacist class divide and who can make movies and who's submitting the movies. Mm -hmm. And so curation has become, um, I mean, it's always been really not just about what I think a lot of uh, artistic <coughs> programming is trying to have things having a conversation with each other, right? But I think a lot of our work is trying to show liberation stories and how to keep liberation alive and, and how to make community events, you know, because we don't need to have film festivals anymore, really, right? People uh, don't go to the movies. Although, as a white person, that's how white people think. People don't go to the movies, meaning white people don't go to the movies. But in fact, there's um, a lot of other communities still do go to the movies because it's a community event. So, I wanted to take just a little time to talk about the healing forces of the work that we do and sort of how um, that is integrated into the work that, um, that all of you present in your various um, Disciplines. Is it a conscious choice? Is it just sort of a natural byproduct? Um, how does that <coughs> manifest itself in terms of healing our, our cells and our, our communities? Any thoughts about that? For some reason, since I've been up here tonight, I keep going back to uh, when I was young. And I think it was 1977 when I first heard the Sex Pistols. <laughs> and um, their song, God Save the Queen, and the first verse, which is, um, God Save the Queen, the fascist regime, she made you a moron, potential H-bomb. And, you know, the guy who wrote that was 18 years old, and it was just like, ah, finally. I, something I can relate to, you know. And uh, what I like about that, to me, it was calling out the kind of the racism and conservative kind of, especially at the time, is the Queen's big celebration, and there's all this right-wing displays, kind of like now here, right? Mm -hmm. And he was saying, look, they give you nothing, and yet you worship these people, right? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because that is, I think, <coughs> calling out power has been a big part of the film festival for a long time, different forms of power. And I think some of our healing um, has been to make sure we are a witness in sharing the stories about uh, trans people, mostly trans women of color, who are incarcerated. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I was a billionaire and I could start my own channel or network, I, you know, I would get a lot of help. I wouldn't just be the Shauna, you know, create a channel. But, the stories that I think most of us really crave and want to see, we don't get to see them anywhere. They're usually documentaries or shorts. Sometimes there are political rallies or events and somebody is making a film off their iPhone and they edit it and that we, that's the kind of movies we crave. You know, things that are showing, things that are happening uh, in the streets, showing police abuse in real time, right? Things like this because a lot of us involved in the festival um, and in my circle of friends, we come from um, police accountability work, anti-violence work, and prison industrial work. And so there is a way that that continues to be part of the film festival. And yet we have a wide range of stories, also joy, um, positive stories. And I think actually displaying a lot of times what's going on with prisons is, is healing, is positive, right? It might not be law and order special victims unit. <laughs> but I mean, if, if we were a little more enlightened, we wouldn't even want that on, we would not even want that to be made, right? And I, I keep coming back in our, my conversations with my friends and communities really has been really, in, and it's always been this way, but it's reached a new pitch around whiteness. And I think part of it in the last few years is because suddenly Trump got elected and it was like, oh my God, this racist man has been elected. It's like, if you're white, look in the mirror. I'm sorry, right? We, we are part of those communities that elected him. We are part of the legacy of white supremacy. That's who we are. 
that we have benefited so much and have not done enough, have not cared, have not shown up for other communities enough. And so how do you then curate that? How does this get turned into a, a community event that you know is hard? It's hard to figure out how to do to do it as a white person because I don't, I'm not allowed to think critically or have the tools, right? But to me, this is the thing always out there in the room in ourselves that what's going on with locking up people and their kids, what's been going on around people upset because Robert Lee statues are getting removed, right? You know, I, I was just reading about the Civil War and most people don't know, like, the Civil War put a stop really to the mass destruction of indigenous communities, right? There's only so many troops to go around. Once the Civil War is over, all those troops who had fought in the Civil War, they weren't in the army, they were like poor white people from the South, they just moved into all this, this land that had been destroyed. There was no consequences for taking a war against the United States. There was no consequences for Robert E. Lee, right? So the thing about whiteness is, and it's so big, big, I don't know if it's like this whiteness is a zombie revolution, <laughs> or it's some sort of like evil kind of um, spiritual force, because it's, 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 things will not get better, healing will not happen, unless we, we do the work and we make the change. You know, I think we live in fantasy here in the Bay Area. I'm gonna chant, I'm gonna channel, which is great, and I know there's different traditions, but it's like, roll up your shirt sleeves. Don't be civil anymore. Challenge, challenge power, challenge the fascist government. Challenge yourself as a white person for all you white people in the audience. We're not doing enough, and you know, we are the problem because we've never done enough. Gay marriage, don't ask, don't tell. This had nothing to do with the struggles of people of color. And so here we are. And we're like, oh my God, what happened? It's like, this was bound to happen. He, he got elected and you know, he went through the primary system. So the whole system's rotten, but it's because we made it that way. And so as far as this is concerned, you know, this is what we talk about. Mm -hmm. This might not be what shows up on the screen, but this is what we talk about. And this is what our panels talk about, because we always have panel discussions. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.